Foreign Affairs hat on. Is she actually stateless or not now? Is she Bangladeshi, British, what? Well, you're asking not a foreign affairs question there, but a UK legal question. And I'm afraid I can't answer it because I'm not. Uh, I haven't seen the papers that the Home Secretary's had before him. But I would argue that this is one of those moments where we've got to look at our own laws and see what's missing. And what Tim raised there was exactly right. This is a moment of betrayal. Now, whether she was engaged in uh, armed activity in Syria or not, I don't know. Uh, but even if she wasn't, she has clearly gone out to support a group that sought to do violence, sought to murder people like us here in the United Kingdom. That's an extraordinary betrayal, and we should be able to reflect that in law. And at the moment, we can't, because the 1350s Treason Act is all about the person of the monarch, and you know, I'm very loyal to the Queen and everything, but you know, things have moved on a little bit since then. We need to look at betrayal in a modern sense and realise that it's, it's about stating that, yes, she is British. Yes, there is something fundamentally... British about her, 15 years in the UK, born in the UK, and that what she has done is therefore a very serious betrayal. And at the moment, we don't have a law that can reflect that. So I understand what the Home Secretary's done. I sympathise entirely with what he's done. But I think we need an extra law here, which is to reflect that betrayal as a particular and distinct crime. You want to update the 1351 Act of Treason, don't you? That's right. And I've written about this for Policy Exchange because, you know, not just me, by the way, but a, a whole bunch of uh, lawyers as well, including Richard Eakins and, uh, and, uh, and a few others. Because what we're talking about here is not a way of othering people. It's actually a way of including people. It's stating that people who are brought up in the United Kingdom who have benefited from the rights and privileges of being you know, educated, access to the NHS, all those sort of things. You owe an allegiance both ways. It's not just a one-way street. And if you betray it, it is, you know, that is doing harm against the rest of the population. That is a specific act of harm. Yeah, and I read your policy exchange paper this morning, and you're saying most people who would be found guilty of this updated treason um, law would get life imprisonment. Would well, Shamima Begum get life imprisonment? I don't know, because, of course, we haven't seen... Uh, you know, the evidence, so I can't possibly comment on an individual case. But I think if you are, I mean, I think, look, if you're going to go and join an armed struggle whose specific mission is to murder British people, and you're then going to reinforce that by, for example, naming your son after Abu, Dhir, uh, Abu Ubaid al-Jarrah, who uh, was particularly famous in the Islamic uprising of, you know, the, the first caliphate under the Prophet Muhammad, if you're going to name after one of his generals who was particularly famous for murdering infidel, you know, you really are pushing this, to put it politely, and I could put it a lot more harshly. Sean, what do you think when you hear